Okay. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about money and uh, we're going to talk about the divine order of finances. Amen. Why is money so important to us? Why is money so important to you? Why? I'm not here to preach. I'm here to engage. Eh? <laughs> I like engaging. So I like asking questions. Eh? Why is money so important to you? Why? Eh? It is a medium of exchange. So for you to get something, you have to? Have money. You have to give, you have to part. It's called parting with money. Okay? <laughs> yes, so money is important to us. But of even greater importance is that money is also important to God. Why? Why is money important to God? We need to. Joanne. Joanne. Why is money important to God? <laughs> um, okay. In my understanding, it helps father the kingdom. Okay. And okay. the kingdom advances. Of course, yeah, it's one of the avenues that God uses to further his kingdom. Why is money important to God, my brother? Okay, yes. Uh -huh. Great. So over generations, over many years, God has used money. God has used finances to advance his kingdom and to advance his purposes here on earth. So money is not just important for us to get us good and nice things and all those things are good. Money is also important to God because it is an avenue, or it's an instrument that God uses to further his purposes here on earth. Okay? Great. There's a quote I want to start with here. Um, it's somebody called Shane Miller. He's an interesting uh, a New Zealander who talks a lot about money. And he says, if I'm willing to trust God with my eternal soul, what is it about money that I don't trust in him? <laughs> okay. So that's an interesting question. If you have given God your heart, you have given God your soul, you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, what is it about money that we do not, we're not willing to fully surrender to him? Okay, so Sarah, you can take some time to think about it, and we'll talk about it. Okay. How much of your money belongs to God? All of us. How much of it? All of it. All of it. All Okay. Now, 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 how much of your money belongs to God? 10 percent. Okay. Okay. So, how much do you give to God? 10 percent. How many give God 10 percent? At least 10 percent. At least. How many give God at least 10 percent? Okay, that's good. That's a certain point. But like we say. How much belongs to God? All of it. A hundred percent belongs to God. Okay? So silver and gold belongs to Him. Alright? Silver and gold belongs to Him. A cattle on a thousand hills belongs to Him. So it's not just the money. It's even what? Even those cattle. Those cattle that you use to make that money. All of it belongs to him. Okay? So how much do you give him? Everything. How much do you give him? Everything. Everything needs to be surrendered to him. Why? Because he knows that we have needs. Even before we ask for them. Scripture tells us that he already knows what you need. All of it, all the resources of earth belongs to him. Okay, so we've laid that foundation. Let's talk a little bit about the divine order of handling money, of how to deal with money. Okay, so we have agreed that money is important to God, 
And money is also important to us. To us. Very, very important. It's also important for his kingdom. So what is a starting point when we want to talk about money? It has to be the principle of work. So, so God said, uh, seven days you shall do it. Not seven days, six days you shall do it. Wow. You shall? Wow. You shall do it. Wow. Work. Seven days you have to work. And then on the seventh day, six days you work. On the seventh, you will rest. Why did God ordain work? Why did God ordain work? Why did God make it um, that part of this principle is that we have to work so that we can get something to eat? Sorry? Correct! Thank you! Ah, this is a very good class. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> God himself worked for how many days? Six days. He worked. He started by working. And working uh, uh, is, um, his work was mostly creation. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we are created in God's image to do the things that God does. And the, God, the things that God does is not just, um, is not just blessing people and, you know, healing and saving. God also creates and continues to create. So, work is God ordained. God himself said it, that by the sweat of your brow, you shall do what? You will eat. Is it possible to eat without working? Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah? You can eat, yes? Like our children, right? <laughs> yeah, but but this principle is established in heaven that by the sweat of your brow you shall eat. So Tafarali, get down to to wow. work. Genesis three verse nineteen, and you can go and read that entire verse on how it came about. So God is a is a is a work is a component of God's command to love. God told us to love. Okay? And how do we love? Our work and how we love are completely intertwined. I wish there was a way we could, we could actually project the, that scripture again. But if somebody can read for me First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12. Who is there? Uh, it says, And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia, but we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Okay, so. Work with your own hands. Work with your own hands that you may not do it. That you may lack nothing. Okay? If you read that scripture again, God, Paul goes ahead and says, look, that from the abundance of what you get out of your work, you shall be a blessing to other people. And you'll demonstrate your love to others. So work and love are intertwined. So imagine if we are not working, to make something. What are we doing? Are we walking in God's love? Selah, we'll come back to that. So, abundance from our work supplies others and comes back to us. It is out of the abundance of what we have gained. Out of the abundance, out of the blessing of our hands. Okay? That is what we use to bless others. And when we bless others, what happens? Okay? So in our luck, others will also come and, and bless us. So you see how God is actually weaving a thread about the kingdom. The kingdom is not just about me. It's about us. It's about the body. 
So, there is no supernatural, super spiritual thing that overcomes a lack of hard work. Okay? So you cannot say today that I am going to give my time and God is supernaturally going to, to just provide abundance. Okay? I am just going to pray. I am going to sit and pray and God is going to do it. Okay. So God in his own way, in his own sovereignty, is able to provide supernatural. Okay? Yes. Isn't he able to? Yes. He's able to provide supernatural. However, there's nothing supernatural can that can really overcome the place of work. Mm. Right? Mm. So for example, let's say that we're all believing God for a miracle. Okay? We are believing God. It's good to, to believe God for a miracle. That's the principle of the kingdom. Because God works miraculously. And we have seen him do it before. Would you, wanna, would you rather wait for God to do the miracle? Or would you rather avoid the need for a miracle? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> avoid it. Huh? Avoid it. Avoid it. Would you, would you rather wait for God to do the miracle or would you rather avoid the need for a miracle? Avoid, avoid. okay. So let me give you an example. You have somebody who's a smoker. Yeah? And a foot a cigar. A subui journey for how many years? 20 years. And then this person ends up getting cancer. So, what happens? You reach, the moment you get that report to you about a cancer, is to go before God and fast and pray and believe for what? A miracle. Okay? So what would you rather do? Would you rather wait, continue smoking, and wait for that miracle? Or stop smoking, understand the danger of smoking, and act on that, and avoid the consequences. Alright? So, we're talking about wisdom here. Alright? So, diligence leads to abundance. And you can read Proverbs 21, verse 5. Diligence. Diligence for this one. Wadilif. 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 Diligence leads to abundance. It is your diligence that will lead to your abundance. Remember, God has given us the ability to create wealth. Okay? The children of Israel were in the wilderness for all those years. All those years. And the time, there was a time they were in the wilderness and God provided for them supernaturally. Okay? But the day they entered the promised land, what happens? The manna ceased. The manna ceased. God told them what? This is the land that I promised you. You have to work for it. Okay? What happened when God was providing all that manna? Mm. Huh? God provided the manna. See you? Yes. They, they, they were told it was enough for everybody. Any liqueur, it was food that was enough. There's nobody who lacked. Okay? Yes. It says that if you stored it for the next day, what happened? Yes, right. It would rot, it would get spoiled. It was unpalatable. Yeah? God met the, all their needs, but still, what happened? They complained. They complained about it. <laughs> okay, so now we want? We want what? Needs. We want needs. You must say, okay, I'll provide it. So God sent quail. Quail. And they got meat. But still, what happened? <laughs> they still co complain. Okay? There is always an innate desire in the human heart, yeah? as long as we are yet to be glorified with Christ, there is always a desire for more. There's always that desire that um, free things cannot completely uh, fulfill. 
Amen? Amen. Okay. So, the first order uh, uh, of, of handling money, number one is work. And remember, work is a way in which we worship God. Amen. Alright? We worship God through our work. And we honor Him. Why? Because God is the same as saying, I have given you the ability to create work. And it, 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 gave, it gave man five things. He said, be fruitful. He said, multiply. He said, fill the earth. He said, what else? Subdue. And lastly, have dominion. Okay? Be fruitful, multiply, subdue, uh, fill the earth, and have dominion. Those five things. That's the full mandate of God. None of those things can be done if we do not work. So number one principle, work. Tell your neighbor, work. work. Be diligent in your work. Amen. Tell your neighbor, be, be diligent in your work. work. <laughs> huh? All right. So here's the second principle of the divine order of handling money. Wisdom. Tell your neighbor, wisdom. Wisdom. Hekima. Senhor, wisdom. My people, my people, who's my people? Yes. Right? Yes. God's people. In you know, Korea, if you fit that definition of my people, well, that you not fit your definition. My people. What was what was that? My people perish for lack of knowledge. Sailor. But that scripture does not end there. What 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 does the, the scripture say after in verse seven? Because you see, so many Bible ones are. What does it say, Mom? They have rejected what? God, they have God. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Knowledge was there, right? Mm. Knowledge in the core. But they did what? They rejected it. Okay? Mm. So people don't, don't just perish for lack of knowledge. They perish because knowledge is there, but they not, do not pursue it, they do not grasp it, and they do not act on it. And knowledge is key for wisdom. That question again, would you rather pray for a miracle or prevent the need for a miracle? Prevent. Prevent the need for a miracle. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Actually, let's read that uh, scripture again. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, and up to 9. Who, has, who can read for us? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. Wisdom is the principal thing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, get wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in all you are getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will bless you on uh, she will place on your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Wow. It says she. 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 Why does it say she? Wisdom is a principal thing. She. Why? <laughs> huh? I know there are those people who descend, who ascend. ascend. Yeah, they, they, they ascend. Yes. And they say they've met wisdom. Yes. Yeah? Pers wisdom is a person. Yes. Okay? Yeah? But wisdom is the principal thing. And this verse here tells us to embrace her. Sometimes I wonder, why did the Bible choose? to describe wisdom in the 
the feminine uh, persona. Why not the male persona? Do you have to say my hint? Because of? Give it back. Yeah? That's a good one, yeah. That's a good one. She's very sensitive. She is sensitive. She is gentle. Mm -hmm. She's not as made of brown, eh? Move to your chest. Yeah? yeah? Wisdom is a principal thing. So, how do we apply wisdom? In any financial situation you're facing, any way or situation in which you're dealing with money, wisdom is the principal thing. Gen Z, pay attention. Wisdom is the principal thing. Because you start early. My friend from Strathmore. So, you start early. So, you need to apply wisdom with regard to getting money, which is through work. You need to apply wisdom with regard to multiplying money, which is investing. And you need to apply wisdom with regard to blessing others, which is giving. Why are we talking about blessing? Why? Remember what we said when we began? Because money is important to God. And God uses money as a instrument for his kingdom. All right. So wisdom is the principal thing in all those aspects. What does the Bible say? That if you don't have wisdom, what should you do? Ask. Ask. Right? Ask. 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 Tell your neighbor, ask. Ask, ask God for yes. wisdom. Yeah? I have this dilemma. Should I take, um, should I buy a fridge? Yeah? Or should I buy, put a deposit for a plot? What do you do? Ask. Ask. <laughs> huh? Tafadali. Ask for wisdom. wisdom. Alright. So use wisdom even with regard to debt. And we're going to talk about debt. <clears throat> use wisdom with regard to debt. Who knows what the interest rate is right now? 21%. Huh? 21. 18. Yes, it's, be it's between 18 and 21 percent. Okay, so what is the return for a uh, simple diashara? To save a boda, you have to buy a piki piki. Kupitia bank. Huh? The kurudisha pesa kapi. Huh? Huh? <laughs> so that's the law. So let's use wisdom with regard to debt. And we look at debt in a short while. How much of what you own is in things that lose value? Hello? How much of what you own? is in things that lose value. You know the things that lose value? Yes, yes which ones? Cars. Cars. Yeah. Uh, what else? Electronics, right? Phones. iPhones. Fridge. Freezer. Okay, what are the things that gain value? What else? Business. Bonds. Huh? Bonds. Bonds. Business. What else gains value? Okay. You want to take a home market? Go back. List all those things that you have. And ask yourself this question. How much of what I own is in things that lose 
value. Okay, let, let me stick here a little bit. When I asked which are the things that gain value, the number one thing that came was? Land, okay. Huh? Plot. <laughs> land. Okay, so land, it's fine. Land usually appreciates in value. It rarely, rarely loses value. But you have invested or you have put money in an asset that is land. But you have an immediate financial need. What will you do? <laughs> huh? You sell it, okay? The school needs school fees tomorrow. It's very hard to liquidate. Very hard to liquidate immovable assets. Wisdom is a principal thing. Yeah, I have a friend, very very dear friend, very close friend of our family. He has assets close to 30 million shillings in the land. But he cannot get 500 shillings to go to town and come back. Nyukweli. <laughs> it is true. Well, this is. <laughs> he has everything. He has plots, big plots, not small plots. But he cannot get 500 shillings to go to town and come back. He has been trying to sell the land for almost. Five years now. Okay? Mm. Wisdom is a principle. You know, remember how we say that my people perish for lack of knowledge? Yes. Knowledge is there. Tell your neighbor, knowledge is there. Knowledge is there. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. And make sure you get it. Make sure you get it. Yes. We will talk in detail. Um, at some other point, we'll talk in detail about how to invest. Mm. Whether investment in assets is better mm. or investment in other things. Mm. We will talk about that. Okay? All right. So tell you with your neighbor, wisdom is the principle. Wisdom, wisdom is the principle. So get wisdom. Get wisdom. In all you're getting, Get what? Understand it. <laughs> okay. So number two principle there we've talked about is a principle of wisdom. So we've talked about work and we've talked about wisdom. So imagine if you're only working but you're not applying yourself to a, to wisdom. Where will you be when we're talking about finance? Or you apply yourself to wisdom, but you're not working. Where will you be? Okay, Julie's there. All right, let's go to number three. Debt. 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 Okay? The beauty about God and the beauty about Scripture, what I really like is that God put all these secrets in his word. Okay? Mm. So number one, God says, the borrower is what? Is a slave to? The lender. The lender. Huh? You know what a slave is? Yes. Huh? Yes. What does a slave do? A slave means haunga haki. Huh? You have no right whatsoever. Okay? So, the borrower is a slave to the lender. And the Bible says, if you borrow, what do you do? You must pay. Huh? You must pay. That's what the Bible is very clear. Yes. This thing, they're in the world. If you borrow, you have to pay. pay. So don't borrow money if you cannot pay. pay. What should you do? Save. 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 Saving is the opposite of borrowing. Do you know what a bank does? Do you have any bankers here? Or to a bank? My wife is still be a bank. 
anachukua pesa hapa anapeana wapi hapa yeah, that's all at a interest and that's how the banks make money you know the economy right now everybody is complaining about the economy oh chumi ni mbaya we are ni kubaya hakuna pesa atuuzi sijauza kama asubuhi ngono na yake no but the banking sector is making billions mm. in any recession no the recession is mm. a recession is a downturn in the economy pale economy inaenda chini in any recession this one industry that always makes money mm. and that is yeah. the banks okay so the banks will continually make money why because we rely on them we put our money we give them we trust them with our money even when the economy is going low we still put our trust in them all right so whenever we engage in any borrowing we must consider our ability to repay jesus said if anyone sets out to build a tower what does he do must count his cost huh? count the cost You have set out to build a tower count the cost what is the cost of building that tower okay mm. so if you are looking to to take debt you need to understand what is the cost of that debt okay mm. uh Psalm 37 verse 21 it says that the wicked borrows but does not does not pay back but the righteous does what the righteous is generous and gives okay so let's not be wicked borrowers look sometimes borrowing may be necessary in what instances hello si tunafunza na yes borrowing may be this is not purely bad Yeah? Yes. But it may be necessary may. That's why I'm going the word may. Why are we saying may? And in what circumstances is borrowing necessary? Emergency. Emergency like sickness. Huh? Sickness. Sickness, okay. Which are the Paying for LPO investment. Thank you for help you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So there are those circumstances where borrowing is necessary where you don't have the money where there's an opportunity that has come a god given opening. Mm. Yeah? Yes. But if you don't act on it, you will lose it. Mm. Yes? Mm. But you have counted the cost right mm. you have counted the cost of borrowing and you have established you will be able to pay mm. then in that circumstance borrowing is okay however however what did jesus tell us huh? jesus said us jesus came to set that free the captain is free <laughs> So do not remain in captivity of debt. There's a scripture that says, my wife can remind me, it is for freedom that Christ came set us free. It is for freedom. Christ set you free to remain free. It don't set you free to go back where? Into slavery. Into captivity. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. So we need to remain free. Amen. Amen. However, if we take debt, remember we must repay. However, God's best purpose is for us to be what? Lenders. That was his promise. Yes? God promised us to the neighbor. God promised. Tell your neighbor, I have been promised I will be a lender. I will be a lender. 
and not a borrower. I will be a lender and not a borrower. Okay, we'll come back here. Ask your neighbor, what is your debt situation? Think about it. So we have talked about work. We have talked about wisdom. And now we have talked about what? Debt. Debt. Now I want you to take just one minute to reflect. What is your debt situation? You know there are people, I have a, um, a nephew of mine. He's actually like my brother. Because he grew up in our home. He has seven phone numbers. <laughs> seven. Okay, we get a wasn't matter. You so you try and call each one. Ile neta ingia yana to me for that day. I kid you not. Seven phone numbers. He has a phone. I'm a chico happy. Neto di? M copper. M copper. He's paying. I think. 180 shillings a day. For how many years? One hundred shillings how many years? Five. Huh? One year. The book can tell 180 shillings per day times 365 days a year. <laughs> if he does not pay 180 shillings, you will never get that person. Debt. Yes. Debt. I hope there's nobody like that here today. <laughs> if you are there, huh? <laughs> check in. If you are here today, let's we have to pray for you. Yes. Every day, 180 shillings. Yeah? He's, he gets an emergency. He has no way of calling you. Because he doesn't have the 180 to use the phone. Please, Chunga, debt is dangerous. Okay? God's best for us is to be lenders, not to be borrowers. Tumela? Yes. Alright. So we've talked about work. We've talked about wisdom. Wisdom. We've talked about debt. Okay. Let's talk about saving. Okay? So saving is the opposite of? Debt. Debt. Saving is the opposite of borrowing. Okay? So let me give you a very practical thing. I told you my wife used to work in a bank. Iyo pesa enye unapeleka kwa bank as saving is what the bank is borrowing from you. To do what? Lend. To lend to somebody else. Do you know how much they're giving you for the money that you're giving them? Mm. Huh? Who knows? Peanuts. Huh? Peanuts. It is? They reduce. They reduce. Yeah. What is the rate currently? Who knows? Zero point? Six per, in fact, six percent is very high. Yes, six percent is very high. So imagine you are lending your money to the bank at how much? Six percent. The bank is taking that money and lending it to Brio at eighteen percent. Three, three times. Okay. Three times. Okay. So what would you rather do? If you want to buy that, what is it? Fridge. Huh? Fridge. <laughs> you want a fridge, you want a fridge. You want to buy a fridge. What would you rather do? Utenda and copper. See. Huh? Utenda and copper. Okubati a fridge. Because you want it today. Huh? Mama here. Huh? Unataka yo fridge le? I was in Bonja. It's for Bonja. It's for Bonja. Kesho. Need of a nigga. Chame. 
than someone who starts at 30 and saves until 60. Have you understood me? Yes. Why? Because of what we call compounding interest. You save na hauguzi. Yes? It generates its own interest. Yeah? If you compound it, there's something we call the rule of 72. 72 is uh, 6 years, 12 months, 12 months in real. In 6 years, your money will have doubled. Genesis. But it's here. The opportunity is now. Forget huh? money. <laughs> Just take twenty percent. Not even twenty, even ten percent. Wake a candle. Wake a candle. Save it. That money is going to double within six years. You'll be surprised. Okay. Let's talk to those of us who are fathers. Huh? Let's start with fathers. <laughs> fathers. Savings is a core principle. Okay? See, 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 we're part and thought. Don't have a coup? I'm a cool job. And we celebrate God. We bring the, ch the child here to be, to be prayerful, to be dedicated. We dedicate them to God. Then what? Five years. You don't have a question yet. What are you doing? What are you doing about that child? What will happen? I can figure out uh, primary school. Okay. What will happen? I can figure out eight. What will happen? I can figure out. I can hear from one. But do you just wait? Hmm? Have you seen those instances where God is amazing? When your wife comes and says, I am pregnant, what happens? Huh? When I'm Huh? What do Men, I'm talking about men. Wife of my teacher and say, I am pregnant. You know you have what? Nine months. See you? You have nine months before? So God gives you nine months to prepare. Imagine the nine month figure that you have got nothing. Who do you blame? Six months from today. Yeah? So we're not fighting in you? Yeah? If it is not, if, if you have not raised enough money and you still want that category of a wedding, what do you do? Postpone huh? is one option, right? The other option is? Raise yeah? on grade. Thank you. Damn. You don't grade the wedding. So please, save money. Remember, money has got time value. If you're taking notes, not that down. Money has got time value. And one day we'll talk about that when we have enough time. If you have saved 5,000 shillings, 5,000 shillings in January is not the same as 5,000 shillings in December. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
5,000, what, what that 5,000 shillings will buy you in January will not be enough to buy you that same thing mm. in December. Mm. So money has got time to run. And we'll talk about it at some point. So please, save. God has given us all the principles of saving here. We need to act like that. And then, last but not least, we have what? Huh? Yes. Investment. Tell your neighbor in yes. investment. Money should not be kept for its own sake. Okay? Money has no value if it is under the mattress. Huh? Money has no value if it is under the mattress. So money is not to be kept for its own sake. God expects us to multiply his resources. Remember we said all this money belongs to God. It belongs to God. God will ask you to give an account. How have you spent his resources? So number one, God expects us to multiply. And please tell your neighbor, multiply. multiply. The Bible says that the master told the servants, occupy. The word used there is occupy. Huh? Occupy until I return. That word occupy actually means what? Trade or invest, if we are to use our current economic language, until I come back. So God has blessed you with the resources. And, and this scripture is not only uh, uh, quoted based on finances alone. There are many, many giftings that everybody in this room has been blessed by God. Trade with it. Okay? Invest whatever you have been given. Because you will give an account. So occupy until his return. There's a child here who said, who gave a, a, a memory verse. The, the, the rapture is the rapture is, is coming. That's a very good scripture. I'm so happy. The rapture is coming. That means the time for you to give an account is coming. So for that. So get ready. Attitude, risk, and return. Remember the unfaithful servant. What did he tell the master? Huh? You, I knew you to be a hard man. The, the unfaithful servant, he accused the master. He says, I knew you to be a, a hard man. So what did I do? I, 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 I buried. What kind of an excuse is that? What kind of an excuse is that? You are actually blaming the master for having given you the little that you have. Yeah? So what did I do? I decided to bury. Then the master said, at a minimum, when the master rebuked him, at a bare minimum, what could you have done? He was it in the bank. The bare minimum take it from me, from this pulpit today. That if you have financial resources at a very bare minimum, what is expected of you is take it to the bank. Even the Bible knows that at least the lowest interest you, the lowest form of investment you can make is to put the money in there. <laughs> the lowest. That's what we're saying. They're giving you six percent. See them? Yes. At a bare minimum. So, whenever we're thinking of investments, Tafadali, number one, check your heart. Huh? Heart. If your heart is not right, 
you will make a very bad investment mistake. And I have seen many people doing that, including me, myself. Huh? <laughs> what is the condition of your heart whenever you're deciding to make an investment decision? There are many investment opportunities out there. Somebody will come and tell you, yes, let's 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 do it. Let's um, let's rare quails. Mm -hmm. One egg was a hundred shillings. In a point of cancer, in a point of diabetes, in a one egg. Check the attitude of your heart. Who remembers the pyramid? The pyramids. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Two thousand. Brio. Six months with the pata forty thousand. <laughs> yes? Pyramid skills. Yes. Check the condition of your heart. <laughs> if your heart is greedy, you go that direction. Yeah? Again, these resources belong to God. It's his money, right? It's his property. Why not ask him? Just ask him. Amen. Huh? Good, should I go and invest in coins? I'm not scared like the same one. So please, look at number one when you're thinking of an investment decision. Number one, look at the condition of your heart. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful, deceitful above, all. above all else. Right? Guard your heart. heart. For out of it comes the issues of life. Flows all the issues of life. All the issues of life, including investment, including saving, including all those things. All those things flow from your heart. So guard your heart. So as you're thinking of investment, number one, look at the attitude of your heart. That is, that was the attitude of the unfaithful son. I knew you were a hard man. So I buried the gift that you blessed me. And the master said, what? Even the little that he has, take it away from him. Chukwani. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, look at the condition of your heart, look at risk, and look at return. Above all, ask the owner, what should I do about these resources? And then, we're talking about invest in eternal treasure. Okay? It's easy to invest in things that are passing away. Jesus told us all these things will, will pass away. Where is your treasure? There is somewhere where you can invest that no more, no rust, rust no. can ever. Yes. Where is your treasure? Can you look for that treasure and invest there? Sometimes, just the very act of giving is the best investment that you can ever make. Just giving, blessing somebody. Who has got nothing mm. is the we don't view it as investment. Yeah? Mm. Do you know us in the church sometimes we don't view it as investment? Mm. But trust me, the most profitable companies in the world are givers. Huh? Look at equity bank. How many children do they educate every year? Mm. I think it's 40,000. One of the school kids. From four, one to from four. And every year, what happens? They're making money. In fact, all the other banks now are starting to create foundations. ACB Foundation, Pope Bank Foundation, all foundation. Because they understand that there's a principle here about eternal rewards. Okay? So invest in eternal treasure. And then lastly, please remember that we will all give an account. All of us will give an account. Let me ask you, do you know how much you spent yesterday? 
Y yo voy a presentar ya. Vamos. Y yo voy a presentar ya. Dilo. ¿Eh? Do you keep records? ¿Eh? Do you know where your money is going? ¿Eh? Please. Keep records. To the last rule. So that you may understand where your money is going. Because you will give an account. Records help you to know where am I wasting money and where am I investing money. Where am I using money well? Where am I wasting money? Yeah? And that's very simple. You need just a notebook. Or if not a notebook, you need it. If you have a phone, there are very simple apps. There. If you spend money, you can make a little more city and two shillings. And a little more money at the end of the day. Yeah? It is important to know exactly where your money is going. Is going. As a basic principle, I always tell anyone this that everybody. Whether Unauza Nyanya, Ama, you are the CEO of the biggest company in the world. As a basic principle, you need to understand Excel spreadsheet. You know Excel? Hmm? Excel. How many know Excel? You have Excel skills. Good. Please learn Excel. That thing is very helpful. It should be basic literacy for everybody. Because that helps you to calculate where your money is going, where your money ought to go. Okay? So please, uh, we will all give an account. Something very quick to beware of whenever we talk about money is money. Remember, everything that God promises you. Money also promises you mm. account of it. Mm. So, so. Mm. everything that God promises you, God says, I'll give you eternal life. Money will also tell you, I can give you eternal life. Mm. God says, I will give you good health. It's your portion. Man will also tell you, I can give you good health. Yeah? So please, let's be very, very particular about that. And we need to know the spirit behind what is happening with regard to money in our time. Okay? So if God says, I can give you good health, how will money manifest going in that promise? Going to the best hospital. Huh? Going to the best hospital. Correct. Man will say, yes, don't worry. I can get you the best medical insurance. Mm. Yeah? I can get you the best hospital, the best doctors. Man will always promise. So that is mammal, the spirit behind uh, wealth and money. So we need to be very clear who we are serving. But mammon, how does money gain how does mammon gain control of our finances? Number one is materialism. We need to be very watchful for materialism. Materialism creeps very subtle. Yeah? The things that we desire are not bad in our normal sense. It's not bad to have a car, we need it. It's not bad to have a fridge, we need it. They only become harmful when they become our source of satisfaction. If you're getting your identity from that car, materialism is crept in and you're worshipping mammon. If you're getting a sense of satisfaction from that phone, materialism is coming. If you have two, if you can raise 2,000 shillings to buy Mulika Mwizi, but you want to go to get Oppo from Mkopa, materialism is coming. 
and they're worshiping Mama. How do they do that? How do they promote materialism? It's driven through the desire for more. Yeah? Advertising, promos, freebies, product announcements. Do you know this, this phone? Your phone, your phone. When did you buy it? Two years ago. Two years ago. Today, the, there are probably six or seven advanced phones that matter. Of the same name. Yeah? Uh, my car is 2014. Today is 2024. There are they have four different additional enhancements in 10 years. So that means every two years, they are, they are appealing to your desire for more. Every two years. Yeah? That is called materialism. Beware of materialism. Comparison. Because my neighbor has it, I have to have it. Okay? Comparing. This is based on our, on our understanding of our worth and our identity. So whenever comparison comes in, what do you do? You counter it with what God says about you. Where is your source of identity? Okay? And then discontentment. We don't want to be content. And to shake. Yeah? That's another sign that mama is creeping up. At uh -uh, I'm not satisfied with a quarter of an acre. I want two acres. Huh? Discontent. Yeah? There's nothing wrong with being ambitious, but also differentiated with being discontent. You are never satisfied. Yeah? Um, our genesis. Jesus, please be very watchful about this because the, 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 the period we're entering in is really going to be dangerous with this, uh, in this regard. And then, again, please watch your heart. Financial problems are not an issue about money. Okay? Financial problems are not an issue of money. They are an issue of what? It's the heart. It's the condition of your heart. If you have financial problems, please go back again, reflect, and look at the condition of your heart. And please guard it. Proverbs chapter 2, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 23. Guard your heart, for out of it, Close the issues of life. Right, I want us to take a few prayer points. And we'll pray shortly, maybe we'll pray for a few people. But this scripture, Isaiah uh, 28, and verse 23, 25, listen and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear my words. Does the farmer plow continually to plant seed? Does he continually turn and break up his ground? Does he not level its surface and sow dill and scatter kiln and plant wheat in rows, barley in its place, and rye within its area? Talking about um, diversification. For his God instructs and teaches him properly. Who? He's God. God instructs and teaches him properly. Let's look at the second part of that. For deal is not threshed with a threshing sledge. Yes? Nor is the cattle driven of a cumin. But deal is beaten with a rod and cumin with a clamp. Talking about wisdom. Grain for bread is crushed. Indeed, he does not continue to thresh it forever. Because the wheel of his cart and his horses eventually damage it. Okay? Again, 
diligence and wisdom. He does not flesh it longer. This also comes from the Lord of armies, who has made his counsel wonderful and his wisdom great. In all that we're doing, in our work, in our finances, in our investments, in our saving, in all our activities, remember that God's counsel is wonderful and his wisdom is great. great. So if God owns your money, if you, like you said at the beginning, if God owns the 100%, who should you consult? Huh? God. Amen? Amen. Asante. So let's just take some uh, prayer points. Um, before we even pray, if you're in debt, distressful debt, come to me. Come. Just come here. Let's pray. Anyone who is in any form of distressful debt, come, let's pray. Let's break that power. Okay? Bible says that you shall be lenders. Lenders. And not borrowers. He whom the Son sets free is free, he is free indeed. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. If you are in debt, any form of fuliza, huh? I also fuliza sometimes. Huh? Fuliza, I would never talk about fuliza. You have taken those phones. Higher purchase, you have taken TVs and systems. Machine of fuliza. Huh? Uh, 